What's up guys, Jeff Cavalier, AthleanX.com. So if you want to build muscle, you're going to have to use light weights. I promise you. And I'm going to prove that to you here today with the use of a couple muscle markers and some first grade drawing skills and a third grade knowledge of farming. And I apologize ahead of time. Like I said, third grade is about where I topped out in farming and there's a lot of people that know a lot more than me, but I will parallel the two so you understand exactly how to build muscle and why those light weights are needed. And what this here is, is my farm. Okay, and on top of our farm, we have all the different crops that are growing. Okay, well, if we were gonna apply this to the gym, this would represent your muscle, and these inside would represent your muscle fibers. Now, who's responsible for growing the crops? We're gonna put a farmer down here. It's about the best of my drawing skills, like I said. That farmer, though, has a lot to do on this land. If he's gonna take care of all these crops, he's got a lot of responsibilities. And the idea is he may not be able to be able to serve all those crops and that farm may not thrive. Well, how does that apply to you and your muscles? The size of your muscles is determined by the number of myonuclei, which is the farmers in this case, that can attend to that muscle that is trying to serve or grow. So what that looks like is if we can't have enough myonuclei, or in this case farmers, to serve this land, well, then you better get a smaller piece of land. Because on this small piece of land, this farmer could feasibly be able to take care of all these crops and make sure that they get everything that they need to thrive. Well, again, our muscles work in very much the same way. It will only grow as big as it has the resources to be able to service the size of that muscle. So what do we do when we're talking about building muscle? Well, there's three things we can do to actually build the size of a muscle, three. The first one we know is progressive overload, okay? And we know that this comes in the gym in the form of adding weight to the bar or additional repetitions to the exercises that you're already performing, but some type of overload to create growth. Well, back up here on the farm, what is our opportunity to overload? Well, it's easy. We can actually just get more farmers, right? Pay for a couple extra guys to come and help out so that they can actually now cover more ground, be responsible for different areas of the crops. Okay, fine. However, there's a limitation, as we know, to progressive overload. The first when it comes to the gym is that we just can't keep adding weight to the bar. We've all experienced it. That overhead press that you're just dying to put an extra five pounds on, just doesn't happen. And you get stuck there for a while. Or the squat you're trying to get to move up by about 20 pounds, just doesn't happen. You get stuck there. So what happens then? You kind of hit a wall. Well, what happens here? Well, some farmers actually adopt a method of farming where they call it monocropping, where they just keep raising the same crops in one area over time, all the time, all the time. But what that does is it introduces sort of a degradation to the soil that doesn't make it conducive to growing other things. Right? You get so good at one thing, but nothing else. You also introduce opportunistic weeds and pests that actually come in and infest the soil here that again makes it more challenging to in the long run, the big picture, not just a short period of time, but the big picture, produce a hell of a lot of crops. So what do we need to do? We need to do something called crop rotation where we put a few different crops in here at one time of the year, we cycle them out, bring a couple different crops in, a different type of crop, and then another one, what that does is it broadens the soil capabilities to be adaptive to more things to be able to still be stimulated over and over again. Well, in the gym, that's the introduction of other exercises, those specialty exercises, the ones that are meant to address the weak links that are undermining your ability to actually progress in those big lifts right now. So working on those triceps, or the upper chest for the overhead press, or maybe even just low back strength, right? Weakness somewhere in the rear delts that will allow you to actually start to push more, but that takes time. And it's gonna take time to build up the ability to go back and progressively add more weight, just like it's gonna take time to earn more money to hire another farmer. It doesn't, you just can't keep continuing to go into the well looking to hire more farmers when you don't have any money left. So what do we have next? Well, the next one we know is my favorite. It's eccentric overload. Okay, and to me, what this really breaks down into are two really necessary components when we're talking about building muscle, probably the two most important, and that is tension plus stretch, or even just the act of elongation, the, the, the elongating of a muscle with tension. And the nice thing is the tension that's required here is not the absolute levels of tension that are required for progressive overload, or in the bigger sense that we know it to be in terms of strength training. These can be more moderate tension, but still enough combined with stretch that provide that overload and stimulus for growth. Up here though, to me, again, the two necessary things we're talking about are sun and rain, which I probably should have done in my blue marker. Sun and rain. 
right? Water and sun are going to help a crop grow. But guess what happens when you do too much of one thing? Because we need the perfect balance to make those crops grow perfectly. If I have, let's say, some sun for a day or two or three, it's probably great. But two weeks or three weeks or three months, we have a drought. And with that, we have some shitty crops that aren't going to grow very well. And that's a problem. And it's the same thing when we head into the gym and we continue to just do these techniques. And you've probably been told to do a lot of these techniques of late, right? Stretch, stretch, everything stretch, stretch and tension. It's a good technique, but with it comes some repercussions. Mostly, decreased training frequency because of the likely increased muscle soreness you're going to get from this. This is a greater insult to your muscle than even some of the overload training, the progressive overload and strength training. That might be a neurological impact that you have to recover from, but this is an actual physical, mechanical breakdown of the muscle tissue that you're going to have to plan in extra recovery time for if you want to be able to train. And with that extra recovery time is going to be likely a decreased training frequency, which could lead to fewer bouts of muscle protein synthesis growth. Now, you could experience a phase of doing this, right, that you're going to move away from, but what are you moving towards? Because again, if we're already stuck in terms of our overload or we're in the process of working on getting through that by specializing in some of those different exercises, it leaves us only one place. And this is why we all need to do this, and that is we need to go to the place of using light weights and higher reps. And I say the higher reps because you need to take these workouts to a point of absolute failure. For these to be productive, the research shows you need to be able to push yourself beyond what's comfortable. Take any given set you might do for 20, 25 repetitions. I'm not talking about the repetitions where it's burning. I'm talking about where you can mechanically no longer perform a repetition. You just cannot contract the muscle anymore because of that burn. That metabolic stress, that's the real driver here. The metabolic stress is the driver of hypertrophy and the necessary one that you have to investigate because you can't continue to do these two. If you reach that point, and only if you reach that point of resisting the burn and pushing through till you mechanically can't lift the weights, that is when those light weights will be anabolic. And what they do is they stimulate those satellite cells that are capable of recruiting that nuclei and attaching it to those muscle fibers so you can increase the count of the farmers in this case or increase the count of the myonuclei that are responsible for allowing you to take this muscle from this size to one like that. And it's, it, it works. That method is a form of hypertrophy. It's capable of driving those new gains, but only if you apply it this way. And the equivalent up here is basically like getting an irrigation system, like all smart farmers would do. They're not gonna rely on mother nature to dictate the success of their crops. They're gonna invest in an irrigation system that will run through here that may not be the sexiest thing in the world. They're not getting large amounts of water at once. They're just getting a good consistent amount of irrigation that allows these crops to thrive. And when that happens, then they're able to get a more consistent production of that field over the course of a year. And isn't that ultimately what you're looking for? Rather than these peaks and valleys, aren't you looking for consistent productivity and growth out of your muscles? And if there was a way you could do it, wouldn't you use that? I'm telling you right now, that is what this serves. This serves in those time periods where you, maybe you're backing off of overload or backing off of that stretch focus training, right? Giving you a place of refuge that still produces gains. And only when you embrace this will you start to see the gains that you're capable of. I'm telling you guys, if you apply the logic here, again, my farming knowledge sucks. But I will tell you that the investment of your time in learning how all three of these methods can work for you is exactly what you want to do. Don't shy away from the lightweights just because the ego may not be able to handle it. Utilize them to grow bigger, better, and stronger. If you're looking for another video guide, oh, by the way, you know how you make this whole thing work? If you want to do more, you just pump a bunch of fertilizer into this field right here with reckless abandon. It doesn't matter what chemicals you do, anything just to make this grow and you've got your answer. As of course, the equivalent to that in the gym would be just taking a bunch of steroids to get to that same end goal of building muscle. Not something I'm going to recommend, actually something that probably has the same harmful effects that having a pesticide-filled field would on your long-term health. Guys, if you're looking for longevity in health, you can head over to athletenext.com. We have programs and supplements that promote both. If you're looking for more videos, guys, make sure you click subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss a video when we put one out. All right, guys, see you soon.